So hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Skies, where we just uh, basically got rejected by Caduceus, just in general. Too cold in the soul and lightless, which is quite unfortunate, but yeah, also not really our problem so much. So I have a lot of exploration to do, so I think I'm going to go south this path, and then I'm debating. Because we do need to find, eventually, the Empyrean. Because that is where the relay is, if I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do. And I need a way out of here because we can't deal with our nightmares, which aren't severe yet, but you want to have a way out before they get that severe, you know? You don't want to be like, wow, all of a sudden I'm in danger, and I should probably do something about that when you're too weak to actually do anything about it. Ah, oh dear. We're going to explore this, well, some of this Western Reach. And by Western Reach, I mean Western Reaches of Eleutheria, of course. Got to remember our terms, the Reach is another region entirely. Although now I wonder, if I go to that relay, is it just that it's broken, or is it that it is, you know, something happened to whoever was there? Because the relays are staffed by people, so... One would hope nothing too problematic happened over there. Oh. One would hope. One might be wrong, but one would hope. Hmm. I do not like these flowers. Patience erode. Tempers fray. Yeah, let's... Hmm. Thing is, I don't know what ports are left for us to discover. Or if we could discover... Thank you for that quick change of music. That was helpful. Oh, hello. Crosses... Aklis? From the cabin's log and writes in Aklis. What? Oh, apparently I leveled up, but also... Lenguriad. Yeah, this is definitely not the Empyrean, but, uh... Another useful port. Really, now? A junior signaler receives a dose of medicinal port at the infirmary. After seeing a frozen corpse spin past a window. We... The dead are hungry, he says. We need to make an offer, or he'll come back and knock on at the hall. Yeah, you see, I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. I am tempted by this, but... No, we're fine. Reprimand him. Stuff and nonsense. Our terror isn't that bad, and while we want to find this port, I also want to find this thing. Or just map the area. That'll work, too. Not exactly what I wanted, but... Don't always get exactly what you want. Must try some of the midnight tea. I'm sorry, what is this? Oh, that's like bubbling on the bottom. Wow, okay. That's worrisome. Found new spite. Cool, cool, fascinating. Guess we're docking now. A new port. Your crew crowd the windows. Atlas, or Atlas, or some other version of that. You disembark onto a soggy wooden platform, barely supported by the marsh mud below. It leads path past several squalid huts and the holes of scavenged engines to the warmth of a marketplace on wooden stilts. Nearby, what remains of an ancient monastery just holds on against the ravages of time and the swampy ground below. Noticed. Enter the port. Something is going on down the other side of the monastery. Fire flickers. Treachery carries on the wind. A woman smoking a cigarette watches from the shadows, unaware of your presence, as a group of grizzled skyfarers attempt to force the monastery's doors. Unlike the crumbling stone, these are made of solid new metal and more than up to the task of repelling the attack. The attack, rather. However, with every blow against them, the monastery itself seems to shudder. Dust raining, raining from high up, stones creak. It'll not take much before something gives. This may not be your problem, but you can make it your fight. Hmm. We don't know anything about this conflict. It's probably a bad idea to intervene. Let's go for it. You summon a few of your crew with a wave back to the locomotive before you can join the attack, however. Hojo Toho, Hojo Toho. 
Ho Jo To Ho, Ho Jo To Ho, I guess. The war cry echoes through the marsh. Urchins, ring breakers from old London from the look of them, surge at the attack armed with broomsticks with sharp objects taped on the end, colander helmets, and cardboard armor. In the name of the Valkyrie, they shout, launching their attack for Sigrid. They swiftly rout the attackers, somehow. The woman with the cigarette is long gone, leaving behind nothing but a smell of expensive ash. Furious. Rotting wooden huts on stilts stretch up out of the marshland, connected by rickety walkways and gently swaying rope bridges. Red paper lanterns line the paths, offering just enough flickering light to avoid unfortunate tumbles into the dark mud below. Ringbreaker urchins in colander helmets and tea tray armor stand to slack attention, longing for a little trouble. Compile our report, report first. This is a small place, it won't take long. It seems quite extensive, actually. In search of midnight's favor. Everything here seems to revolve around tea and spice and a special blend made in the monastery that nobody you speak to appears to have tasted. We are not worthy of midnight's favor. They all tell you through unsmiling faces before offering you a special deal on some other blend or incense they just happen to have. Hmm. Head into the marshes, it is time, apparently. A pair of urchins guard the path out of the market. Wooden warns the older of the two. Nothing out there but plants one to eat your face off and water what drives you potty. But they show you no interest in stopping you. The marsh beckons. The light of the port slowly fades. Beyond lies a forested gray swamp, misted over and filled with leafless black trees that claw the air. Few venture out here, except to gather incense from what they call Aklis's Garden. There are no maps to it, many do not return, but your head is clear. The path ahead looks manageable. You have nothing to fear. Mm, continue through the marsh for now, onwards and forwards in search of its secrets. The swamp slurps at your boots, the mist makes it impossible to gauge any real direction. You might have been turned around a hundred times and never known it. Ah, close your eyes and choose direction, it's as good as any. Time passes. For a moment, you feel as if you walked in a circle. This is possible. It may also be a trick of the light or madness. In the distance, you hear what sounds like a hunting horn. The mud bubbles. The air here is poison. Continue. Onwards and forwards. Uh, head towards the north. Your instincts push you in that direction. Nothing. Something cracks under your feet. Fragments of bone, a batch of spore-throwing plants spits their poison in your direction. A dull ache begins beating behind your temples. Eh. I wonder. Follow the water currents. Most of the water is stagnant, but the occasional stream runs through it elsewhere. There doesn't seem to be any harm in this, as far as I can tell. You take a moment for a breath of air. In another situation, this could be quite pleasant, specifically a warmer, drier, brighter one. I think of it from anywhere else in the universe. You take a moment to catch your breath now that you have a fighting chance of making it through this place. You feel dizzy. So dizzy. I appear to be back in the same place. Climb to the... Cling to the tree lines, rather. They must lead somewhere. More time passes. Bah. Attempt to retrace your steps. We're not finding anything here. Uh-oh. The water and land seem to shift before your eyes. Was it this way you came, or this way? What That tree looks familiar, but wait. Uh-oh. A series of large sporing plants nearby do their best to bring you under their spell. Down in the mud, a sharp pain, a snake slithers away, its killing instincts bigger than its stomach. Oh no. I am lost. How do I escape here? A series of vines stretch around the trees here. Large grape-like objects hang from them. Unlike grapes, however, the contents are moving. Your thoughts turn to the warmth of the fire on the train. Having first pick of the good meats. You hear music in the distance. The music of Albion. The music of home. Oh? An encounter? Oh god, no. Edging past a fallen tree, you narrowly avoid having your hands severed by the snap of a particularly hungry plant. A toad hops up on a rock, watching you stumble around with an evident sense of amusement. It hops away as if to say you wish you could do this. Your name slips from your memory. You reach for it, repeat it, hold it tight. Oh no. Slight problems. Um, an encounter, though. Something looms out of the marsh mist. The Queen of Hours. 
Someone splashes towards you through the mists. Bent with hurry, wearing broad skirts of black and gold, the mist lifts. It can't be. It's the Empress herself. Her renewed majesty, forging through the mud with her skirts raised around her royal ankles. She looks at you, and her eyes are bright as suns. You. Have you seen a man pass? Her attention is caught by something in the mist. Albert? Dear Albert, don't wander off. She hurries in pursuit of someone you cannot see, and the mist closes hungrily between you. She is gone. Was she ever here? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Attempt to retrace our steps again. Back to civilization. Oh, thank God. Uh, you emerge from the marsh, much to the surprise of the ringbreaker urchins guarding the torchly entrance. Still, it will be a while before your head is ready for another trip out there. Yeah, how... I don't understand the marshes. It did seem to be completely random. Maybe if I just moved completely randomly, it would work? I'm going to try that, but first, let's explore some more of this area. Visit the Court of Tea and Spices. The bulk of the market is devoted to brews and incense in the almost priceless Midnight's Favor. Every breeze carries a different scent. Clouds of rich scents hang in the air. Although the market is small, it is bustling with both London and native Lu Eleutherian traders. Each cramped stall and barrow is piled high with the region's finest tea leaves, opiates, salts, and spices. Oh? Had I more money? Hmm. Ah. Or some bohemian affiliations. Interesting. Browse the tea barrows. Many of the spice merchants have tattoos on their left cheek, denoting what they sell. The Londoners present have yet to adopt the tradition. For now. They will eventually. Although this port is mostly famed for its homegrown midnight's favorite, it's quickly becoming a trade hub for every flavor and blend of tea you could possibly, w possibly wish for. Customers don't brew them, but bite into leaves and lick samples off their fingers. Hmm. Curious. Ask about Midnight's Favor. Some say it is blacker than night and tastes even deeper. Your inquiry draws little but averted eyes and apologies that they are not worthy of Midnight's Favor. The select few who trade in it consider it far too precious to simply sell. Hmm. Visit Murgatroyd's Taste of Albion. Even out here you can get a mug of Murgatroyd's finest. Quote, unquote. Hmm. Although one of the more professional-looking barrows in the market, the Murgatroyd family's special blends have gained little traction. Proprietorist Amberly Murgatroyd glares at you from behind a slender cigarette holder, twitching at the inconvenience of your presence. Hmm. The Murgatroyd company is known for more than tea and crackers. There's little you cannot learn at their salons for the right price. But how's business? Emily looks at you with disdain. Oh, please, even if I had time for Father's Spymaster games, exactly how much do you think one overhears on the edge of nowhere? She takes a long, pointed drag from her cigarette. Honestly, if you must waste someone's time with such nonsense, go annoy my sister Melusine. I think we stash her somewhere in the reach. Her and her ridiculous inventions. Yes, I'm sure she's nothing better to do than listen to you. Well, not entirely fair, but fair. Speak with her again. There aren't many fellow Albioners this far into Eleutheria. Hmm. Are you here to buy? Emberly glances around, looking for a distraction. If you're not here to buy, but I don't know why you're here, unless she sizes you up. Perhaps. Perhaps? This sounds like an opportunity in the offing. Emberly lights a fresh cigarette. I'm sure you've heard of Midnight's Favor. It's all anyone wants around here. Well, I have plans to deal with that. Were you to assist me when the moment presents itself well, I would be most grateful. In a most profitable way for us both. Hmm. Probably planning to destroy the source, so, well. Or to take over. It's a curious thing. Anyway, yeah, what's the deal with the, the urchins? The urchins seem young to be in a position of authority. Finger squeezed right around a cigarette holder. That little scrot and her infernal playmates. Amberly shakes her head. I'd blame the parents if she'd had any. No discipline. A few damn good spankings never did me any harm. Today's youth could do with getting to know the back end of a slipper. Just look at my sister Melusine. Doesn't really tell me anything useful. Yeah, ask about the Midnight's Favor, even if it's the competition, she must know about it. Oh, we are not worthy of Midnight's Favor, Amberly snaps, her tone suggesting that she's parroting someone else. Haven't touched the stuff, can't wait to get back to Albion and never hear about it again. When I'm running the business, she catches herself, well... Of my sights set rather higher than beverages. Hmm. I don't know, supplying... 
Ooh, wow, oh, that's expensive tea. I'm not buying that tea. That's garbage. 90 for tea? Nope. Uh, I suppose return to the market. Yeah, that's a quart of tea and spices there. Nothing very valuable. Um, enter the house of silks, I suppose. The sleepy warmth oozes from the curtains. Admission is free. What waits inside is negotiable. Oh. Well, hello. The curtains part with a sickly sweet breath of incense. Velvet wraps the inside of the hut like a fine chocolate box, with silk curtains delicately hanging down to provide translucent privacy for guests. Behind the shadows of wealthy traders lie in the embrace of soft, well-plumped cushions, gently sipping from bronze hookah pipes until their eyes and troubles are somewhere else entirely. Hmm. Could use it. Could use it. Sit down with a hookah pipe. The cushions are soft, the honeyed incense is sweet, and we could use a little bit of relief. Much appreciated. You settle down next to a fellow captain, a sea trader, a tea trader, rather, from the Blue Kingdom, still smoking through her death mask and a figure who prefers to keep their identity private. There's a little conversation. The incense is strong, and each breath from the hookah only serves to wrap the world in fresh, warm layers of cotton wool in a half-remembered dreams. Oh... Of course, an audience with Mr. Pipes. Master Pipes, I do apologize. The hooded proprietor keeps to itself at the back of the house. A particularly large hookah pipe delivers smoke into the darkness of its cloak. A gramophone beside it quietly plays a Bach concerto. An apologetic refusal. A serving boy returns, bowing apologetically. Mr. Pipes is relaxing and has no interest in either chitter or chatter. If you have business, you may present it to one of the staff. Otherwise, his master encourages you to avail yourself of the facilities. There. I could use a bit more terror relief. Five for ten sovereigns. That's pretty damn good, I would say. Hmm. Ask about Midnight's Favor. Didn't see this option before. A place like this should have the specialty of the port, perhaps. The serving girl shakes her head. We are not worthy of Midnight's Favor. Perhaps, in the distance, her cloak... Master raises an arm, or at least a sleeve, just a little. A summons. Excuse me, please. Oh? Ah, coming from the cloaked master, not from... Huh. I was worrisome there. Um, return to the floating market. The sweet of this place is sickly and intoxicating, but... We have other things to explore. Uh, visit the Vigilant Nightingale. An old, mostly picked-apart locomotive acts as the ring-breaker, urchins, kip, and base of operations. Two of them guard it sleepily. Hmm. One of the urchins jabs you with a weapon, a broomstick with a knife on the end. Friend or foe? Friend, delivered with an encouraging smile. The urchin salute. Good, good. Enter, friend. The broken-down engine has been comprehensively gutted to serve as the ring-breaker's home and base. Filthy hammocks stretch between metal bars, mostly full of snow snoring urchins. Others sit around decorating tea tray armor with bright paints, or sparring playfully with wooden sticks. Hmm. Could do. Train with the urchins. Their equipment may smack the schoolyard, but they take their fighting seriously. Hmm. Unfortunate that. The ringbreakers come at you with much speed and little mercy, though they only re wield regular broomsticks. No sharp objects on these ones for training purposes. They still hurt. Several minutes of being smacked around the legs later, you are forced to yield. Eh, yeah. one more try. Ah. Ho, Joe, to ho. There we go. You wield your broom pr proudly, fending off attacks with ease and returning them as stern but educational bops to the ringbreakers' heads. By the end, they reluctantly agree that, for a grown-up, you're not entirely rubbish. Rubbish. Maybe a bit lucky. A certain silence falls. They seem to be expecting something. Bellow Hojo Toho. A triumphant battle cry. Hojo Toho, they chorus in response. You sense you have earned no small amount of respect here. Uh, visit the captain's cabin. The door leads to one of the few rooms that hasn't been gutted. A series of names has been scratched into it and then scratched out. The only one still readable says Sigrid. Curious. Enter, barks a high-pitched voice, Sigrid Spitesdoter, Valkyrie of the Ringbreakers, and the closest thing this port has to law. Despite being the youngest Ringbreaker to be declared Valkyrie, Sigrid has the glare of a seasoned general and the scars to back it up. 
She sits sternly behind a mahogany desk, almost as tall as she is, carefully engrossed in a copy of Sun Tzu's The Art of War. It is a show of military diligence, only slightly undercut by it being upside down. Cute. Ask about the ring breakers. Why are urchins acting like the constabulary in this port? Someone's got her, right? Secret's face is a mixture of pride in her job and irritation at being questioned. Don't just be thinking we're a bunch of kids, you hear the Valkyrie? Greatest warrior in old London, she was. Yeah, well, in her name, we kicked out the old bugger what brought us to the wilderness to clean out his chimneys or whatever, and now we have a home. Can't blame us for wanting to protect it, right? Even if it's a bit damp in bits. Of course, she adds, can't stay here forever, we're all one of the ring breakers. When you're old enough, that's when it's time to go out and find fortune out there and find others to fill their places. All welcome, just gotta swear by our code and they're welcome to grab a hammock. At least as long as they don't fart too much in their sleep. Fair. Uh, what about the monastery? It dominates the port, but stands apart from it. Never been in, myself, Sigrid admits. Them bohemian types in town are said to know away, but it ain't through the front door. Anyway, without the tea from the place, we'd not have much of a home. Reckon we'll keep defending it. A Valkyrie doesn't need thanking. Hmm. And about Midnight's favor, she must know about the brew that made this port's name. Yeah, like them snooty bohemian types that'll let us try the stuff. Sigrid shrugs. No big problem, nothing's wrong with juice, not unless you drink it after brushing your teeth. Just don't brush them, that's why I say. Probably bad for them anyway, working them over like that. Yeah, n no, I think you need a dentist. Y you guys need... Yeah. Well. Well. That's about the War of Midnight. What's going on between her crew and the attackers? Hmm. No time for tea. Sigrid's face darkens. Shouldn't let that Amberly Murgatroyd get her boots dry after striding the port. We know it's her trying to destroy the Midnight Tea so everyone will buy Daddy's old scrappings instead, but she's tricksy. And with them clay men of hers always around, we can't go accidentally pushing her off into the marsh. But we'll get her. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Eventually. Visit the brig. A series of iron bars have been welded into the stern, ready to hold anyone who might do the port harm. Prisoners of Sigrid, a mix of angry, doleful, and drunk eyes stare back at you from the darkness. All the prisoners have been stripped of their underthings. The ringbreakers do their best to keep them happy by regularly throwing them boiled sweets. It doesn't appear to be working. Interesting. Okay. Well then. What about this statue, though? It sits in the middle of the dock, untouched by chalk scribbles or damage. A couple of tattooed spice merchants lean against it, quietly eating their lunch. The mysterious founder, it can be assumed. If not someone equally important to the market port, they look somewhat more imp than man, with a flag on their lapel that matches the crest of the nearby wreck of the Vigilant Nightingale. Peering closely, there's a plaque between the figure's feet. Someone has scratched out all the details, perhaps the subject themselves, preferring to maintain a sense of mystery, or plausible deniability. Hmm. I haven't looked at the shops. Let's see what's there, real quick. Oh, bronzewood, you said. Well, ah, uh, had I more money, if only. Hmm. Most of Aculus is constructed from trees gathered in the marsh. They're soggy, they take time to dry, but while technically not bronzewood, they're close enough to it that most Londoners can't tell. Today, the merchants have a surplus. Either they sell it or it has to go back in the mud. What? But why? Why would it go back in the mud? I'm unclear on this. Still, I don't have the money to actually do anything about that. No money, no resources. Walk down to the monastery. The path is narrow and poorly lit. Not many venture this way. Hmm. Petrified rains run down the side of this ancient structure. Two giant featureless doors block the crumbling entrance, far too large for any human to open. The metal is unfamiliar, but resilient. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said of the monastery itself. The ages have not been kind. Oh? I have three soul flaws, you say. They say the monastery opens only for those undergoing great torment. Rumors are less clear on exactly how they know this. Interesting, that. Speak with an impatient penitent. He beats his head, bleh, fists against the door. He'd be very worrisome if he was beating his head against it. Getting nothing but bloody knuckles for his trouble. A lost love. You, he blinks tears from his eyes. You're Captain right? You've got a look about you. Maybe you can help. My husband, he was never the same after he came back from the Z with that tattoo. The eye, that blessed eye, it drew him here. I'm sure of it. 
Um, I think I've seen your husband. Possibly. He's not here. I'll just leave it at that. I think that's all we can do, really. At least all we can do for now. Let's head into the marshes one more time. Just see what happens. Oh. Sorry, I can't let you go out now. Sigurd's orders, you got the urchin attempts diplomacy. You got missed in the bone box. All the spores and stuff out there, it wears off. Come back when you're not dribbling so much. What? What? I got what? Please explain. Please explain now. Ah, well, I suppose if I'm not going to go back in there. Let me look at my... No, oh, no, no. Officers. Who gives me Bohemian? There you are. Okay. So, sorry. First officer is going to be the princess for just a moment. Ah, uh, now if I remember where. The Court of Tea and Spices, perhaps it was? There we are. Visit the Midnight Garden. Steps lead up to a wooden temple, landscape with flowers and gravel. Not just anyone is welcome. Mere money will not grease the wheels. Ah. I see. Hmm. The noise of the market slowly fades as you follow the rickety wooden steps down to the marsh. Bohemians calling themselves Midnight Connoisseurs have built a wooden pagoda overlooking the monastery to savor the taste of the leaves that grow within. Ask the Midnight Connoisseurs about the tea. How good can it be to wor be worth so much trouble? Eh, good question. You would even ask, in this place, so close to his presence, the Midnight Connoisseurs stare at you coldly from behind their teacups. Well, aren't you delightful. A connoisseur of fine teas, you say. Um, browse the tea barrows? No, don't see any real opportunity there. Hmm. Well, no, let's go back in there. Visit the Taste of Albion. Maybe there's a way to have some? No? Cool. I don't... I just don't know. Don't know how to go further in on this port. At least, not yet. At the very least, not just yet. But... Hmm. I will eventually. If not today, then at some future date. For now, though, thank you very much for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon, and we will fix this problem as well soon. But for now, goodbye.